Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're going to make the festive traditional food of Puerto Rico, pasteles, delicious. And we're also going to make Cuban roast pork sandwiches, cubanos. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo, as Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo, celebrating life every day, responsibly. If you were to ask me, what is the one Puerto Rican dish that is unique to Puerto Rico, that says Puerto Rico, I would tell you it's pasteles. In all of Latin America, the word pastel means cake. In Puerto Rico, it means celebration. Pastel is a dish of pork embedded in a batter made of ground root vegetables that is wrapped in banana leaf, then wrapped in parchment paper, tied up and boiled. And you have it at Christmas, you have it at Thanksgiving, you have it at New Year's, you have it whenever there's a huge, huge celebration. And when you make pasteles, at least in my house, it was a very, very family-centric ordeal and I'm going to show you how to make pasteles today. So I have a piece of nice pork butt right here, nice marbled piece of pork butt. And you can see that I'm cutting it in little pieces. And that's usually the first thing that we start. Pasteles are like a Mexican tamal, which is meat and batter wrapped in banana leaf. Tamales are made with cornmeal. Puerto Rico is unique in that we are the only ones that do not use cornmeal to make this dish. When you go to visit anybody's house for the holidays, especially around Christmas, somebody will pull out their pasteles. Now, there was like an ongoing little rivalry between my mother, who makes excellent pasteles. My mother's pasteles are really very, very good, and she prides herself. My mother's sister, Maria, makes the most incredible pasteles in the world. My father would always say, oh, Maria's pasteles. And my mother would kind of bristle, you know. But let's make some achote oil. These are called achote seeds, also known as annatto seeds. We use them in Latin American cooking instead of saffron. It gives your food that beautiful yellow orange color and it adds a distinct flavor, a nuttiness that is missing in saffron. I have some olive oil. And because we're going to treat this with gentle heat, it doesn't bother me to use olive oil. We're gonna wait for this just to get a little heat and it's gonna give me insane color. And once you see the achote oil start to bubble, we're gonna lower that heat. Now, as simple as achote oil is to make, you just can't put it on the stove and forget about it. If the achote seeds are allowed to burn, you will end up with black seeds, green oil, and what's left is good for nothing but the garbage can. So let's just watch this. Okay, it's starting to get happy. You see it's starting to get fuzzy and foamy over here? That's what we're looking for. I'm going to lower the heat on this now so we can watch the color. And I'm gonna pour you a sunset in a bowl. So there we have it, achote oil. And this is one of those life-changing ingredients that you can keep in your fridge and impress all your friends and neighbors. I'm going to take the pork and put it in my pot. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of achote oil. And mommy would say, enough achote oil so that it doesn't look pale. So enough to make it pretty, right, Ma? I'm going to add culantro, that uh, cilantro times 10, and tuck in a bay leaf. And then I have a little bouquet of cilantro that I'm going to put in there for flavor. I'm tying the cilantro together because we're gonna add water to this. I want it to be easy for me to take the cilantro out. Salt, a little 
pepper. And I have my water. Let's add some sofrito to that. Sofrito is an aromatic puree of onions, garlic, tomatoes, sweet red bell peppers, green peppers, ajicitos dulces if you can find them, cilantro and culantro. Or if you can't find culantro, you could use more cilantro. I'm gonna give this some heat, high it first to bring it to the boil quickly, then I'll lower the heat, simmering and skimming for about one hour, and then our pork for the pasteles will be done. Okay, while we bring the pork up to heat to the boil, I've taken the liberty of roasting off this big pork bone, and if you don't have one of these, you can ask your butcher to save bones for you. They're usually happy to oblige. So I roasted it off till it got nice and brown, and then I threw it in my pot here with an onion and a bay leaf and about a teaspoon of peppercorns. And I'm going to make a nice pork stock that I'm gonna to use to help flavor my batter for the pasteles. This is my mother's way of making pasteles. Everybody's mother has their own way of making pasteles. You can use chicken broth, you can use beef broth, you can use whatever kind of broth you want. Tweak it a little bit and make it your own. It's been on for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna give it another hour or so both things should come up together and then we'll start putting pasteles together. So it's been a little over an hour, about an hour and 15, that I've had my pork simmering, and I've been skimming it and keeping it nice and clean, and it's just about ready. So now that the pork is done, I'm gonna move over here and start working on my masa, the batter for the uh, pastel. I'm going to call in my big guns, my son, Eric, to help me with a little muscle. Hello, handsome. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna need you to grate these viandas for me. Can you do that? Okay, sure. And we're making pasteles, so the sooner you get this done, the sooner you eat. Excellent. There you go. Okay, so I have the calabaza, which makes the pastel nice and soft, according to my mother. Calabaza is the pumpkin that we find down in Puerto Rico and around the Caribbean. You can interchange it with something like butternut or acorn squash. What I have over here is a jaltia, and I'm going to peel that. Jaltia is a root vegetable that you find all over the Caribbean. You won't see this in Spain, but you will see it in Central America and South America in the cooking. You can boil this and eat it like a potato. Pretty much anything you could do with a potato, you could do with a jaltia. And you know what? I think I'll have this jaltia done before you finish that calabaza. Mm, chances are good. And I'm just gonna leave this here for you. It's waiting. Thank you. <laughs> I have a potato your regular generic potato, and that's gonna go into the masa. How you doing? I'm all right. Need any help? No. <laughs> okay, so I'm leaving this potato here. Next to the yati, I yeah. got it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the platano. You take the top and the tail off. With the edge of your knife, you just score it down the back. And then you work the skin off the plantain with the tip of your knife. Run your thumb underneath and the skin comes off. <laughs> okay, so here it is, Eric, it's all waiting for you. Appreciate it. And then the green bananas. And now the green bananas are really the the base of the, of the masa. It's what we grate most of. Take the tips off the green banana, just like I did the plantains. You treat them pretty much the same way. Score it right down the back, push the side up with the edge of your knife, and then just run your thumb right down and push the skin away. And again, I just wanna draw your attention to the fact that as much as they look similar, they're very different animals. Like a plantain, green bananas will go through different stages of maturation. The difference being that this will end up on your breakfast table, and unless you're frying maduros for breakfast, a plantain will not. I'll help you now, okay? Mm -hmm. Pass me the other guayo. Here's where I show my big, tough son who his mommy is. It doesn't look very good yet, does it? Not yet. But it's something to look forward, right? Oh, man. 
Eric can polish off, and often does, when my mother makes them, when my mom makes them. How many pasteles can you eat at a sitting? Oh, four. Really? I didn't think that many. I thought maybe two. No, I could put down four. With or without arroz? No, no rice. You know what, Eric? Why don't you start mixing that together while I get a few more green bananas going? Guys, I know that this looks very, very strange, but trust me when I tell you, pasteles are something that we are insanely, insanely proud of. And within family to family, there's like a little rivalry and competition about who makes the best pasteles. Now, you're always bringing boys to the house. And girls. Well, yes. I'm always bringing people to the you're house. You're always bringing people to the house. Has anybody ever said, like maybe Sam or Jesse or somebody, my do friends, they like pasteles? I used, to, I used to believe that my friends came to my house to see me. Uh-huh. And then I came to grips with the fact that my friends come to my house to eat my mother's food. <laughs> And there's, there's just no way around it. <laughs> they come to see you. OK. We're almost done here. And the color of your pasteles can vary depending on how much calabaza you put in, you know, the different viandas, with green bananas being the big part of the whole thing. The other viandas are like add-ins into the grated green banana. I see you adopted mama's method for mixing your masa. Patented, one-handed masa mixing technique. <laughs> I hope she's watching. Put your elbow in that, boy. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some salt. And I'm going to add pork stock. I'm gonna cup and you know, it's for flavor. I have some achote oil here. My mama would say, a mí no me gustan los pasteles hincho. I don't like pale pasteles. That looks good. And over here I have some milk just about to come to the boil, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So that was a cup of milk to this amount of masa. So what do you think? This is the right color? Perfect. It looks really good, right? Mm -hmm. That is the seasoning part of the pasteles, and now we're gonna get set up for the actual making of the pasteles. You wanna put them together or tie them? I'll tie. Okay. This is a banana leaf. It smells green and fresh. You can find these in sheets in the frozen food section. So let's get to it. I'm just painting a little achote oil on this banana leaf, which is sitting on parchment, and it's going to give the pastel a really great flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of the alcaparrado and some meat. Banana leaves really do impart a special flavor to the pastel, don't you think? Absolutely, they're delicious. And we're just going to tuck a hot pepper in right there. And then I'm going to pick up the ends of the parchment paper and I'm going to start folding down. We'll have to make enough for David and Angela as well. Okay. Squeeze in the masa so it's all together. Fold twice and bring this over. Fold twice and bring this over. Can you tie this for me? Absolutely. And so we'll do that again. When I was first married, I invited my husband to my home to eat, and my mother had made pasteles. My mom says, Jerry, would you like to try a pastel? And Jerry, of course, you know, is like, oh, yes, sure, I would love to have a pastel. What she doesn't tell him is that she snuck this hot pepper in the bottom end of the pastel. She sees him eating and she's standing, kind of just like standing waiting for it to happen. And when it did, all the fire alarms went off and my, there was smoke coming out of my husband's ears. She thought it was absolutely hysterical. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family, exactly. That's a good job. Thank you. The achote oil helps keep the pastel from sticking to the banana leaf. Funny how nobody's around when we're making them, but Oh, they'll show up once they're ready. Yeah. So again. Okay. Once, twice. And there's this. And then squeezing, squeezing, folding, folding, and there she goes. Over to your capable hands. Should I put the first batch in, do you think? Yes, you should put them in. 
It'll be just in time for them to get home. Usually pasteles take about an hour to cook in boiling salted water. In like 15 minutes, this is gonna start smelling like pasteles. One of my favorite smells in the world. Okay, and I'll cover this. It smells like pasteles in here. It sure does. You wanna check on the arroz we made? Yeah, arroz con gandules, rice with pigeon peas during the hour that the pasteles were cooking. Wow. Oh, that came out beautifully. Gorgeous, you wanna give that a little Absolutely. Beautiful. Look at that. You want to serve a little bit? Sure. We'll start doing the pasteles. Okay, these look really good. The one with the extra knot on it is the one without the hot pepper. This one? I think so, yeah. Hey, Dave, Ange. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Just in time. <laughs> Guess what we did? We made pasteles. Not too shabby, huh? My mom would be proud. Did you hear that, Ma? Eric made this one special for Angela with no peppers. Wow. <laughs> you really, well, you're all excited. These are the first pasteles I've ever made without my mother. I'm very excited about this. I hope you're watching, Ma. Although now what she'll do is she'll make me make them all the time. <laughs> right? right? Yeah, you might have shot yourself in the foot with this. <laughs> So these are basically ready to go right out of the pot, right? Right out of the pot. And then the rest that we made, we can freeze. You know I like to keep them in the freezer for like emergencies or special occasions. Mm. How long do they keep? You can keep them in a freezer for like a couple of months. Mom, these if, are delicious. Yeah? Yeah, they're delicious. Do they great. taste like mama's? Yeah, I think so. You think so? They're soft, they're not yeah. hard. Yep. Hard pateles are no good. These are delicious. Can I taste they're them? They're tasty, they're well seasoned. You get the brine of the olive, the sweetness of the pork and the pork stock that we put in the masa. Isn't that amazing? I call this a hit. Mmm. I told you how to make them. You get a couple of your friends or your family in the kitchen. You can make an afternoon out of it, and then you can all sit down and enjoy a delicious Puerto Rican traditional pastel. So what do you think? Oh, my God. They're good. Great. They're really, really good. I got an oh, my God, a really, really good, and they're great. You can celebrate. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, my first pastel is my maiden voyage alone, and it's a smash. Buen provecho. Buen provecho. Buen provecho.